I've recently discovered something. I've finally found a use for Games Workshop's Liquid Green Stuff. Now initially, Liquid Green Stuff was designed so that you would use it to fill in gaps, voids, bubbles, things like that that might show up in your models. It's interesting that it came out just before Finecast was released, if, I'm, if memory serves. Because early Finecast had a lot of bubbles, gaps, voids, and a lot of other problems. So, when you would call Games Workshop and say, hey, I bought this model and his entire ass is missing, or whatever, uh, they would frequently say, well, do you have some liquid green stuff? Because that will fix that problem, which is, of course, not really true. I purchased some, because that's what I do, and I used it for the first time, actually, just recently. I bought, quite some time ago, a Cairn Wraith, which is from the fantasy line for Games Workshop. And it's kind of a ghostly kind of character. He's plastic. He's a single figure, but he's on a plastic sprue. He's a little one of those kind of cool models. It's a great looking sculpt, I've got to be honest with you. I bought it, and I did an unboxing of it for Beasts of War back when they had Vampire Week a long time ago. And it sat around on my table, and it sat around amongst all of my stuff. And just recently, I kind of got a bug in my ass, and I thought, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to you know, fix that. I'm going to paint it. He was already put together, and he's got two main halves that go together that make up the top of his cloak. And he, uh, it didn't work. It didn't work real well. I didn't put it together closely enough. I, I blame myself, because it's a good model. I just don't think I glued it quite right. So the two halves, there was a gap. Look like a zipper running all the way down the back of this ghostly guy carrying a big scythe and being scary. Which would be great if he were a Scooby-Doo villain, because then that would make sense. But I didn't want him to look like a Scooby-Doo villain, so I wanted to get rid of that gap. So I took some of my liquid green stuff and a beat-up nasty old brush. A very You don't want to use a new brush with this stuff. I'm just going to be perfectly honest with you. Use a beat-up nasty brush. You get a little bit of wet, and you get a little bit of green stuff, and you start painting it into the crevice, the void, whatever you're trying to take care of on your model. In theory, you should be good then. And it looks okay, until it dries. At which point, it contracts, and it contracts back down into the void, or into the gap that you were trying to fill. Now, your void or your gap is back to the way it was, only not quite as deep as it was. Slightly, microscopically less deep. So once it's dried, you have to paint again and go back to work on trying to get it back in there. This can go on over and over and over again, ad nauseum. So in my opinion, liquid green stuff is not particularly good for what it was meant to be used for. But during this project of trying to fix the big zipper down the back of the Karen Wraith, that's when I discovered what liquid green stuff is actually quite good for. It's quite good for texturing models that are too smooth. If you use your beat up nasty brush and you don't dip it in much water, or you dip it in some water and you wipe the water off, and then you go directly into the green stuff and you start dabbing and splotching kind of hard all over the model, you keep dabbing and dabbing and dabbing like that, you can make this very interesting, gritty, dirty look to uh, a model like this Karen Wraith, who, you know, should be hanging out in graveyards. He's not going to, you know, the mall. He's not hanging out at, uh, in the cubicles at work. He's not dressed for success. He's covered in filth, because he's kind of an undead ghost thing. So, because the model's plastic, when you get done painting him, he looks very smooth. Now, if you're a Space Marine commander, you have a very nice cloak, you have a very nice cape. It's probably made out of some sort of armored silk or whatever. And, uh, you know, you've got servitors who take care of it all day long and make it nice and smooth. So his cloak should be very smooth. But if you're an undead guy, you should look a little bumpy. You should look a little grungy. If you're a Chaos Lord, your cape should not be pretty. It should be ratty and falling apart and covered with filth. This stuff, liquid green stuff, is a little tiny can of filth. So you can take this and dab it onto the models. And it works great. I covered our friend here, the Karen Wraith, pretty much all of the top of his cloak and a bit of his base in this green filth. 
and I think it turned out really well. What I'm looking forward to now is painting him. I want to give him a good paint job and then uh, see if this worked out as well as I think it's going to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take about five minutes, paint this guy up real quick. I'll just go about five minutes. It should only take me, I'm sure it'll only take me five minutes. So I'll be back in five minutes. It won't seem like five minutes to you. I'll, I'll edit it. But it'll, I'm just going to take five minutes and then come back and then I'll show you the finished paint job on our friend here, the Karen Wraith, and show you the real use for liquid green stuff. Okay, so I lied. It was actually six minutes. The painting took five minutes. But I took an extra minute to reset the camera, move some stuff around the background, reset the lighting, um, change clothes, trim my beard, and let my hair grow out. It's, it's only six minutes later. It is certainly not over a month later. No. Six, six minutes later. Anyway, so the model. He's done. And I'm really happy with the result. It's, uh, it's a great... I'm just really glad that it worked out like I thought it would once it took paint. Um, I did a lot of really subtle things with the model. I did a lot of subtle things with the paint scheme. I primed him black, and then I took another primer that was a light gray, and I sprayed it from above. I was using airbrush for both, both of these steps, both for the priming the black and the priming the light gray from above. Priming from above with a lighter color than your, than your initial primer gives it this extra kind of highlight level. It'll, uh, it'll make it look like light's hitting it from above, which, you know, you kind of have to fake. When you get things this small, you have to kind of over-exaggerate a little bit the shadows and the highlights on the model. Something to do with the physics of light and photons and whatever. Look that up online. Um, but yeah, this guy turned out pretty well because I did a lot of washes after I did the initial um, airbrushing. And then after that, it was some dry brushing and some more touching up and just a lot of going back and forth and subtleties. I love subtleties in models. I don't paint my models usually to be very, you know, like harshly highlighted or harshly shadowed. I like to make them, in my mind, it looks, you know, maybe a model like that might look great on the table from six feet away, but I like to look at them here over the top of my glasses. This is when, when I really enjoy a model at this distance. So this technique, this liquid green stuff, this little can of filth and texture. This is a, a, a great thing, not for what it was originally intended for. It's a great thing for adding texture to a model, subtle texture without trying to throw sand on top of a model to make it more textured. That doesn't look good. That doesn't look good. But this and a crappy old brush and not very much water and just a simple dabbing motion can really bring a model a bit more into the forefront, make it look a little bit more realistic. You know what I mean? Like I said, he's this this wraith is hanging around in, you know, graveyards. He shouldn't be clean. He doesn't go to the showers at night. You know, he doesn't doesn't even go through the car wash. Nothing. So if you're looking to fill in a bunch of gaps in fine cast resin or, you know, in my case, poorly put together plastic, uh, it was totally my problem. I don't know that this will do the job for you. I'd look into something else. Uh, I can't say what maybe just regular green stuff and working it in there and sanding it, you know, if it's a big enough gap or a big enough void. But this stuff is not the end-all be-all to the problems with fine cast. It's just not. They always ask you, well, do you have some of this? You know, if you call them and you have a problem. But this is not going to do it. The, the liquid green stuff is not going to do it. It is going to do some really interesting effects for texturing uh, on models, on bases, on, uh, you know, capes. You can use it on Rusty metal. I'm going to try on some of my dust warfare tanks. You know when you see a car and there's rust underneath the paint and the paint is still there and it's still kind of shiny but it's got this bumpy texture to it and you know there's rust underneath it? I'm going to use this to try to make that effect on some of the, the walkers in dust warfare. So it's great stuff and I'm excited to do more with it now that I've finally figured out a use for it that's actually useful.